So we now need to take care of those little details. I, of course, don't expect um, you to really spend too much time doing this. Uh, again, this comes with time using the program and learning how to identify where you would tend to shadows and um, those more logical details in the image. But I'm going to, of course, show you because uh, this will help you wrap your head around how we are observant with an image and how you can actually really dig into those little details. It does get complex at times because, of course, here we've got the image that's actually on top of her with a mask applied. Um, so he is still above her here, but we've just hidden some. We haven't deleted it. And we need to add some shadow to him here. We need to add some shadow to her there and some on top of the couch. So it can be a, a little bit of a brain teaser when you're trying to figure out where you're actually adding a layer for this shadow. And the reason I say layer is because we're not going to add shadow directly onto either her layer, the original image, or onto the puppy's layer right onto him. We want to add a layer, a new layer that we can put shadow on. And we may have to do a couple of layers so that it's something we can edit or revise or simply take away altogether if we don't like what's how it's working. So we need to do a couple of things with the mask in order to ensure that we're going to be getting content where we need it. Now I'm first going to create a new layer here. I'm going to click on the little icon here, the new layer icon in the layers palette. That's going to put one on top. Now remembering that he is technically on top of her, not behind her knee, we have to make sure that when we put some black on that layer, that it is um, hidden from her knee. There's a couple ways to do this, of course. We have the mask, so if I actually command click on the mask, that's hiding this part of her leg but I don't have him selected as well. I can actually do command option on him and that will take him away from the selection. But is that what I want? Is that going to put, um, let me put black there? Or, so you can see it gets confusing. So I'm gonna do a test here. So nope, but it lets me put it around him. So that's what I don't want at the moment. So I'm gonna undo that. I'm going to deselect that. So now I know I need to make a selection that gets the, um, the black there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make this easy on myself for the moment. I'm going to copy this mask to him. So I'm going to hold option down, click and drag that mask onto this new layer. So I'm actually applying that new layer to a, that mask to a new layer. So I'll do that again. I hold option, click and drag, and you see my cursor doubles. That's copying that mask to that layer. Now, when I put some black on that, you can see it goes behind her knee. That's good, that's the direction I wanna be going. But I also want to make sure that it just stays confined to him, not going all over. So I'm going to command click on him in this layer. Again, it gets confusing. Command click there to get the selection, but then I'll make sure I'm working on this layer. Not on the mask, but on that layer. So you can see I have it selected there. So command H will hide that selection. And I'm also going to make sure that the softness is correct. So the hardness there is all the way down on that brush. And then I'm gonna to try to be subtle here. Now I'll be able to fix this up. And it's staying confined to him because we created 
Command H again will show us that selection from his layer. So Command H to hide it again. So I went a, a little heavy there so that we could see. So I'm just going to undo that. And I'm going to be a little more subtle about it here. And then I have a few options as far as adjusting that. I can adjust the opacity of it. I can adjust the layer mode. So I can just go down here and see how any of these interact with him. So for the most part, the opacity does what I need to do. Um, multiply takes away some of it. Not really, so I'm just going to keep it at normal. I'm going, to, I'm going to do the simplest thing here. So we get a little bit more depth there. So that again, you can see even that is a little much. So I'm going to pull back the opacity on that. And I'm going to add some shadow to her. So now she is under him. So we need a layer, a new layer. I'm going to click on her layer, click new layer. That new layer, which has nothing on it yet, goes between her and him. And now, in this case, we don't really have, it's going to be a little difficult to um, keep the shadow confined because we don't have her selected. So we're going to be very subtle with this. I'm going to reduce the size of my brush a bit using that left square bracket. I have black selected. I'm just going to do one hit behind his ear here. And oh, I have him selected still. I forgot. So deselect. Is he still selected? There he is. So deselect. Now I'll do, I call it a hit, just one hit there. Okay. So now I'll adjust the opacity on that. So you can see how it does become a little bit of a, a confusion when you're trying to understand where you should be putting these shadows and how you should be arranging your layers. And again, I could work on this part alone for half an hour before I'm happy with it. But I always advise the more subtle, the better. So just a little bit of shadow there. Because usually when it's done subtly and it's logical, the viewer is not going to question it. Their, their mind and their eye aren't going to question it because they'll be looking at the subject matter rather than studying shadows. Um, so when you're subtle like that, you almost get away with more. Now on the couch, so that again is probably this layer, the best one to do, the one that we just did her arm with, but I want to keep that separate because I want to be able to adjust her arm and maybe adjust the couch shadow differently. So I'm going to make another new layer. And then I'll go down here, grab my brush again, have black. I can do a smaller brush, but this is going to happen under him anyway. And over top of her legs, if I'm not careful. So I'm just going to be very subtle there. So I'm, I am going to reduce the size of my brush a bit. And I'll be able to adjust opacity in a moment. So it really becomes trying to determine what feels natural. And Command-0, we'll put this back. So it's it would need some work. I would need to spend some time here, maybe even do a couple of other layers to do a darker strip through there while I have the, the larger spread shadow and so on. But you can see how some subtle shadow work can really pull him into the image. Now finally, he's a little bright there, right? He's He's definitely, that image is, has a higher exposure than the rest of this image. So it takes away from some of that subtlety. So now that we have him here and we have a selection, I have a few options. I could make him a smart object and I could adjust his brightness contrast. I'm actually going to use a layer filter, a layer adjustment. And 
I'm going to select him again. So this is his layer, and I should be naming these. When you get this many layers, it's, um, it's important to name them. So I'm going to be specific here. Uh, shadow knee and shadow couch and shadow arm and I'm even going to drag these so that they're in logical order okay so now I'll select him and with him selected and clicked on his layer I'm going to go down here and create an adjustment layer. Now this is going to be a filter over top of him. Again, we're trying to work non-destructively. I don't want to do anything I can't come back from. So I'll do uh, brightness contrast because he is a little bright and a little high in contrast compared to the rest of the image. And I'm going to play around with this. First I'm going to, well, I'll show you what that did when I created that layer, it isolated only to him. If I didn't select him first, and I created that adjustment layer using this, it would just be covering everything beneath it. But I said, I only want you applying this layer to him. That's why I selected him. And that little white spot is him. So it means it's only gonna work on that area of everything beneath him. And that'll be him. So. We'll see if this affects the um, knee at all. It may, because what it's going to do is go on top of her. So we'll probably see that it's going to affect her a bit. We'll have to fix that up. I may actually have to try and apply this mask to that layer. And it won't let me, so we'll have a... Um, We'll have to sort that out, but we're going to see what happens. So I'm going to adjust that brightness. I'm going to pull that back a bit. Yeah, you can see it's happening on top of her leg. And that's okay, because we have a solution for that. And I'm going to pull that contrast bit back just a bit. So just that, if I turn that off, you can see how that kind of brought him into the image a little nicer and it looks far more believable. If I were to show this to my mom, um, I know she would just look at it and think, oh, that's a beautiful picture and what a cute dog. She wouldn't question it. And we've really only tended to the details minimally. We could really get very picky with this. So the only thing is we've got this overlap, the filter affected that. So I'm going to command click on the mask of the puppy and then click on the filter and I'm going to see what happens. I deleted, that didn't work. So I'm going to fill, remember we're working with black and white. So I'm gonna fill that with black and See if that gets rid of it. So no, nope. so I'm gonna try white. This is where it, it even confuses me. So it's not letting me get rid of any of that. So that's because it's the invert when I selected him. So I'm gonna choose to invert that. And this is even me trying to figure out when you get confused you gotta figure out what's going on. Okay, so I'm adding black and it's adding the mask. So I'm gonna undo that and I'm gonna add white and that should clean it out. But what helped was command clicking on the mask because I had it there. So now I can deselect and that invert, the, the uh, inversing the selection often you find you have to do that depending on what you're selecting so I was selecting on a mask so it was selecting externally of him and when I select him of course it selects uh, just him so 
little things like that. They can be confusing. They still catch me at times, but there's always a way when it when you have your layers um, properly, not only organized but uh, apart. You're not doing anything on top of something else in terms of um, not doing it on its own layer. If you were working all on a single layer, this would be uh, horrible because we could never go back. We could never use any of the tools we've created with paths or selections or masks. Okay, so there's some of the details and the better you get at this, the more you want to tend to the details. Like I said, I could spend probably a couple hours uh, working on this. But what you're always trying to do is be very subtle. Um, use the kind of feather um, you know, way of working, not working uh, too harshly, just being as subtle as possible, knowing what to watch for, considering how uh, shadows may happen if this was an actual picture, and then you really start to understand how you can use Photoshop um, that way and using it convincingly.